On this episode of Run, Lift, Push, Team USA Bobsled Combine Breakdown. If you're like me, you went online and you're doing some research and you can't find much of anything that is super useful and some of the stuff you find is contradictory. Hopefully this will enlighten you and give you a little more prep than I had going in. You're going to start with a 45 meter laser timed dash. You're going to get three takes of that. You're going to then go to the broad jump and you're going to get three takes of that. And then you're going to go to the underhanded shot put toss and you're going to get three takes of that. I didn't exactly know what surface I was going to get into, so I brought a pair of spikes and I brought a pair of running flats that are kind of designed for cross country. Everything's done with lasers, so you're going to get a start, beep, then you're going to hear one at 15, you're going to hear one at 30, and you're going to hear one at 45. The way they explained it to me is that you get three heats of that distance, and they're going to take the time from the start to the 15, from the start to the 30, and the start to the 45. So going in, I thought I was going to have to do several heats at all the different distances, but really it's just three. Coach told us that they don't really care about the 60 meters um, and that they've done away with it for this year's combine. I'm guessing they're going to do that going forward. I've seen some contradictory things on the start that's no rock start. You basically have to have your front foot completely planted. They want it to be within the one meter box. So you got the starting laser and then you've got a piece of tape one meters from that. They want you to stay in your lane and your front foot has to be within that one meter box. And the way the coach explained it to us after our first two heats was he said, put your back foot on that and that'll give you a little bit of a ramp up because the time doesn't start until you hit that laser. The coach also pointed out that it's good to get low but not so low that your hand is gonna trigger the laser. You want your foot to trigger the laser because that's gonna give you the most amount of time and momentum. Definitely bring a pair of spikes. Uh, spikes helped me a ton. This was a rubberized track. Side note, feel free to take off your shirt if you're super ripped. That seemed to be the uniform of choice for many dudes because it was super hot. But for me, keeping the dad bod still covered was my best move. They did our broad jump in the sand pit, uh, which was phenomenal because you can get a good extension on your legs on the landing. Coach made two good suggestions. The first one was to not let your toes go over. He said your, that flick is gonna give you a little bit of power. So don't curl your toes over the edge. The downside was that the surface changed right at the edge there. It went from rubberized to concrete. For me, that wasn't great because I felt like I couldn't get a good footing, that the sort of level changed right at my foot pad and I felt like I couldn't get a good push off. I couldn't get good traction. I did switch to my running flats, which I think gave me a little bit more power, but then I went back to my warm up, just distance running shoes and they had a lot more grip, which helped me get a decent jump. Not the best jump in the world, but PR for me, so I was happy there. Onto the shot put toss. Uh, on this one, they actually did say to curl your toes over the edge, because that would give you a bit of a lateral push right at the end of your toss. It has to be two hands. You have to have both feet planted, uh, so no like jumping up. Downer for this one, at least for me, was that they used a rubberized indoor shot put, uh, which had a lot of give to it. And on my first throw, I had a lot of trouble just keeping a grip on that thing. I don't have the biggest hands in the world, so I was used to a ball of iron and being able to chuck that. So I felt like I lost a little bit of power. You can fall forward, uh, you can jog forward. They kind of just wanted as much lateral power as humanly possible. So side note, our coaches were really cool guys. Really laid back, and as long as you were giving a full effort, they just wanted to see you do your best. So that's the best I can do to break down what the combine is like. For me personally, I've been getting two questions a lot. The first is, how did you do? And the second is, you gonna do it again next year? To answer the first one, I think I did really well in my age bracket, the over 30s, solid third out of three. Uh, overall, I mean, I didn't embarrass myself. I went in knowing that I had a hamstring injury that I was kind of nursing. So then will I compete next year? I still don't know if the speed's there. I've been really trying just to see if I even have the potential to score high enough. I had a year total of being in the gym and probably about four months of speed work. And I honestly don't know if the speed is there. I don't know if I've reached the age bracket where those fast twitch are just kind of gone and I need to compete with my own age group, not necessarily the general public and the 20 somethings who are friggin' smoking on the track. And I honestly don't know. I'm still kind of debating that. You can see the environment's changed a little bit from the norm. I'm in Maine vacationing uh, with the family and sort of giving myself some time to clear my head. It's not this challenge, it's gonna be something else because I believe in staying epic. So thank you for watching. Just stay epic, my friends.